Children's direct education has always been and will continue to be a cornerstone issue for me, as I know that it is for many of you here today. However, I hope that my record has proven once and for all that supporting school choice is not contradictory to supporting our public schools. In fact, the portrayal is truly a false choice. I support the education of our children no matter where they're learning. That's the key, where they're learning. So I thank you for your support and I thank you all for being here today. All right guys, setting us straight and slant. As you can tell, we have some visitors here. They have heard how smart we are. Not everybody knows all the way who they're 15, so let's show them what we can do. Fours through 15, <coughs> show your dukes. Dukes up! Huh. Go! Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. 32, 36, 40, 44, and 48. That's the four, but now there's more. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, This is the single most important and effective education reform movement in, that has ever existed. And it's happening right now as we speak. I mean, last night I was in Rochester, New York. Tomorrow night I'll be in Minneapolis. The night after that, Seattle. The night after that, Anchorage. The night after that, San Diego. I'm going around the country, and there are groups just like this all over the country. Uh, that are that are meeting uh, to, to talk about school choice and, and reform in all kinds of ways. I'm, you know, the fact is that throughout the 50 states, the, the problems are much the same, uh, although with some differences. But essentially, the monopoly model is the same, and that's the problem everywhere throughout the country. And so these same people who know they like to have choice in what restaurant they go to or what coffee shop or what cell phone plan or many a million other things in their own lives, they often think, well, but, you know, particularly with other people's kids, choice isn't important. We will just order them to kind of a monopoly school environment. And if that school doesn't serve those kids well, throw money at the problem has been the only approach that's been tried for at least a generation, decades now. And you know, if you don't think it's a national problem, just look at the educational, the, the national and international comparisons we showed at the top of the movie, of the U.S. being the bottom of the large industrialized countries in any, compar in any uh, comparisons, and just something as simple as dropout rates, where really, I mean, right now, there are different ways to measure that, but between 25 and 30 percent of American kids are not getting high school degrees in an increasingly technological 21st century economy, a world economy, competing with the best and brightest in the world, think of a quarter of this country not having a high school degree, and what kinds of jobs these people will have as we go forward. It's an absolute crisis. I have three children. I have Antonio, and then I have Miranda, and then of course Mario. Yay. Fourth, sixth, and ninth grade. And um, basically, uh, I'm a single parent, and there's a lot of challenges, but um, this is one that we uh, really pray for for every decision that we make, especially for the scholarships. Thank God for the scholarships that are that we have the opportunity to have. So, thank you for that. If you had something to say to a donor who had given to the tax credit program um, to help fund scholarships, what would you say to them? Thank you. Thank you so much. Bless your heart for thinking about the future of the children. Thank you. Pray. We pray for every decision that we make. And that um, we, in fact, we're praying again for another year for a scholarship so my children can continue 
to have a um, positive education, to uh, be better in their community and give back to the community in the future. Good morning. I'm Eileen Sigmund. I'm head of the Arizona Charter Schools Association. In Arizona, we have 510 charter schools serving approximately 120,000 students, which is 12.6% of the students, the highest percentage of any state in the nation, and 25% of our schools are charter schools. Tell us what having a scholarship for Lexi means to you and what it's done for your family. Having the scholarship for Lexi means that, um, you know, I started this fight as a single mother with very little money and didn't know where to put her that was safe and having the voucher program and the scholarship has enabled me to put her where she needs to be. She's learning, she's becoming a very social little girl, she's using her sign language, it's meant everything in the world to be able to provide an education, a real education. Uh, what are your friends doing? Are your friends, hey. Talk to me. Do you want to go swing? Can you show me swing, please? Swing. Please. Can you say please? Lexi, the swing's open when you're ready. You ready to go? Oh, go ahead. You want to go swing? You want to go? Please. Can you say please? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead and swing. Go ahead. You can go swing. All right. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Hey, 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 come here. Hey, real quick. Just give me a kiss. Give mommy a kiss. Say thank you, mommy. Thank you. And remind you that school choice in Arizona is not just the choice to attend the local school down the street. That's a great choice. It's also um, the right to attend a public charter school, to have a scholarship to attend a private school, to just attend a private school if you have the means to do that, to attend school online um, in Arizona, to have a tutoring program after school. It's also a school choice to school your children at home. All of those things are critically important, um, and Arizona has created through policies that um, the legislature has, has created now over the past 20 years, the opportunity for kids to take advantage of those different settings in many different ways, be it tax credits, um, direct funding of students in the public charter schools, scholarshiping programs, voucher programs, whatever it takes. Our goal is that Arizona public education is about the students. At AZVA, and I'll tell you why. Is my youngest daughter has a medical uh, problem. Um, it's a health issue, and she had missed a lot of public schools uh, according to that time uh, schedule that they had set. She would miss two to three weeks, once, twice, three times a year, depending. She was constantly late for school um, because of treatments that she had to take in the morning time. And she was, uh, she was failing. And it, it does something to a child's self-esteem when they are not uh, at the same level as their peers. We decided to choose um, Virtual Academy because it allowed her to go, go and um, meet the standards at her own pace because it was needed. And I think that there needs to be option in our society, in our community with schools because every family is different. And right now we have a school system that is the one size fits all. And I think that it works so well is because it does accommodate uh, to individual need. And um, so, I know the results I've seen have been quite successful with my daughter in just this short time that she has been online. And um, it does take a lot of self-determination and uh, self-discipline in order to meet these standards. Uh, because you don't do it for them, there's not a teacher there. Uh, there's, so she, she, it is teaching her uh, things that, um, you know, I've seen a change in her and it's, it's been good. So. I like, I like the school choice, and, and uh, I would support it completely. <laughs>